So that right. that was access for cheap the cheap seats, the cheap helping seats. those guys out. Yeah. yeah, it seems to be there's an arms race with stadiums now for the world's biggest, uh, like jumbotron or span screen. Jumbotron, that's so '80s. Dude. I know. I haven't been to a game in a long time. Can you tell? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, that Atlanta's the current record holder, so they're but they're trying to beat Atlanta. Absolutely. Over at SoFi. Yep. Oh, ooh, ooh. see, he, he's he's like, you yeah, see him? Yeah, right. You were. You feel it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I, I, he, his he, face got a little red. up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, he got a little bumped. A little, <laughs> little chest beating going on right there. I got you. So now uh, this will definitely be the world's largest screen in uh, or fan screen in the world after yeah. it's done? Yeah, so th the new Oculus here has screen here services. Here in, in SoFi. In SoFi. has screen services on both sides of the circle so it's not just a single ring there's display elements on both sides of the circle that's hanging down Ooh! so it's, oh, it's a double it's side inside screen. outside it's a kandinsky painting <laughs> of jumbo screens oh kandinsky man he's damn he's, he's, out. he's on something today. man <laughs> yeah. so i don't know who said that <laughs> <laughs> all right let's let's play the game here what are the tech could you introduce to improve something like this Oculus? What could what could then take it to another level? Because this seems, as, as Chuck says, a bit of an arms race. Yeah, I mean the the holy grail really is uh, to have VR players on the field, right? Oh my! Projected augmented reality more than VR, really. Yeah. But augmented reality players projected onto the field. I mean, we're still some ways away from that. Uh -huh. But what would uh, I don't uh, that get would it. be so cool? I don't get it. What so would you check do? it out. So an instant. I asked him, please. Oh, I'm sorry. So <laughs> who am I? I know who you're are. You there? Do you work for IBM? <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, I mean, let's just take this example. If you are an Atlanta fan and uh, your team is playing in Los Angeles, you want to be able to go to Atlanta right. and watch that game on, on that the field, field in front of you in your oh, home As a matter stadium. of fact, they do that oh, now. Oh, oh, so I could be in the field. They don't see me, but they run through me. Well, you could have that, maybe. You could also have just a, an away game played at home. Uh, so, right. You could have. So, like, they have yeah. viewing parties now for the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like, your team goes to another city, right? So, you all put on VR and you're all in, this, in their stadium. now you're in, in their place. But you're in your, stadium, in your stadium watching the game on your, your field. Hot oh, yeah. yeah. So, you're, so, here's the thing. As a stadium owner, you got to love this because that means everybody's got to buy hot dogs. And that's and, true. And they're soft drinks. That's true. And, and they're not watching and, on the 85 and, inch. And not watching. They're actually watching the field, just okay. like a regular game. Give them a reason to get out of home. Give another and come reason to, to get stadium. out of the house. And, no, get out of home and go to the bar and put on your. Because <laughs> 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 you know, the truth is, no, actually, Neil makes a really good point. The truth is, if you bring that technology to a stadium, it will only be a very short period of time before bar owners bring that technology. To their venue, okay, well, they there get a go. miniature version, a miniature version, right, and then basically you you'll be more watched. work for me. You say that works for you too. <laughs> no, no, he <laughs> more work for him. More work for He's like, hey, guess what? I'm good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Wait, so is that real? Is that? I mean, we're really going not, there? Not yet. Not yet. Uh, the display projection I think technology with Pokemon, is the problem. Uh, uh, Pokemon Go. That's right. Yeah. If they can just show up in places. So, so we could do it today with looking through your phone, right? But that's not the best experience. No, you want to be able to look at it in a seamless way. So there's right. a couple of barriers, one of which we're about to solve with 5G, which right. is the ability to get that data out of the field real time, uh, recording uh, what they're really called voxels, the uh, volumetric image data, so that you can project from any so position. So it's a three-dimensional pixel. Three-dimensional pixel yeah. and get that out of the current stadium. So 5G will help with that. Where we're falling uh, a little short still is in the display technology. So right now you need something like maybe Google Glass. Right. I was going to um, say. An that's... augmented reality right. display to look at it. Eventually we'll be, be able to project it in fog or something like that. You know, that technology is still a ways off. But, mm -hmm. I mean, they're working on it. Yeah. Man, that is so cool. It... I mean, like. How big but in you, a way, though, but let's, specs, let's, so. let's, 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 little, let's play this out just for a second now. Because, see, if I'm an NFL player. And I'm smart. And I hear you say what you just said. You're no longer my friend that helps me. You are now my competition. And now we go back to where jocks beat the hell out of geeks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The, because, big, the biggest regressive. <laughs> exactly. All right. Because let's be honest. What you just said there um, is one step away. For instead of an augmented reality, which is basically the real-time transmission of data, yeah. mm -hmm. to why do I need that? 
I'll just create the data myself and transmit it so that you're seeing a game that is really an algorithm that even though it may be predetermined, it's still a game that happens, right? And you can watch football. So you want, nobody it, gets hurt. Isn't that just, nobody isn't gets that just, it's AI football. Isn't that just AI John football. Madden football? AI football. Right. It, it, yeah. No, it's not John Madden because, see, John Madden, you're playing, whereas this would be, would be an your, indeterminate algorithm. That oh, would, 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 so none of the outcomes are predetermined, oh, and you would see a real game. Right. Well, so one thing about if you do your, your integrations well and beautifully, often people won't notice it. It'll be seamless a seamless part of their experience. So I, I talked about what's what's going on that might be hidden or what might be yeah. um, part of the visitor experience that they might not be thinking about, yet they benefit from it at SoFi Stadium. Check it out. Cool. In modern times, football teams keep track of their players mm -hmm. in, with high-tech monitoring systems and GPS, how far they've moved. Yep. Uh, will there be any sort of high-tech sensor systems yeah. And that can be invoked yep. at it's field actually, level? It's actually not GPS based, it's RF based. <clears throat> okay. So we have a ring of basically sensors around. So when the players walk out of the dressing room, they have a, a chip in their pads that gets turned on basically when they exit, then when they exit the locker room. And then uh, within the playing surface basically, uh, they track the movements, they can then figure out things like velocity and top speed and, and all. Right. So, when, so, so, but that's not unique to the stadium, if everyone has a chip in the modern NFL. The league basically mandates that system. And Plus for the health and well-being of the players too, yeah. right? Right. You can track how, how far they run, how fast they run, how much they're on field, etc. That means you can also measure how fast they decelerate in a block. Yeah. Like you're running yeah, and I can run at you and I got your speed all the time, bam! You go from 20 miles an hour to zero in, in, a, in a meter or whatever. Right, right. So, Ben, why are they using RF technology if 5G is basically available? So it depends. What is that sensor trying to accomplish? So on a high school field, you have GPS. You're out on, in the air. You can see the satellites. The GPS trackers will fit in their pads. More importantly, the GPS satellites can see you. The GPS. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, but that's okay. Uh, and indoors, now you have, again, the roof, which yep. is blocking those signals. You need to provide some sort of local system that can now provide that location data. Okay. So, so 5G building. is not a local system. That's a, well, 5G is a local system, and they're... I mean, but, even within the stadium, local? Absolutely. Oh, so oh. to that technology of DAS that I mentioned earlier, we have to build our own 5G network right. inside of a stadium to meet the density of people who are there. You know, 80,000 devices in, well, we might even call 160,000 uh, if you got a watch and a phone, right? Mm -hmm. uh, devices in a small space. Now you need dedicated electronics, uh, dedicated antennas and radios just for that stadium by itself. But mm -hmm. that tracking versus making phone calls all different kinds of 5G that are starting to come to life. Mm -hmm. And the density, the number of devices as we look at IoT, and really those sensors are IoT, uh, is just going to balloon as what we IoT start. IoT stands for? Internet of Things. So That's what that... That's what that abbreviates? Yes. Internet of things. Yes. Things should never be abbreviated. Yeah. That word thanks is for not important I was enough. like this. Thanks for clearing it up. <laughs> <laughs> so, as, Internet of stuff. I don't know what it is. <laughs> as, I, as I sit here and listen to you explain that, Ben, my, I'm, I'm looking at my mo my cell phone is dating and out of date within two years. Yeah. 7G. So how do we future-proof? What's coming that we can do that you are – that you're going to be able to jump on and utilize. Yeah. Yeah. How about 7G, 8G, 10G? Yeah. It'll all be there. The, right. the way that we future proof in our architecture is we say we don't have a crystal ball. The only thing we can do is put more pathways for more antennas. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure that you have the ability to put today you have one antenna in this room, tomorrow you have two, four years from now you have four or five. Got, I got, I got, I got to interrupt you. Okay. And back to the future, two which took place in 2015 mm -hmm. or 16, I forgot, somewhere in our past right now. Mm -hmm. um, back when it was made, people had fax machines, okay? Mm -hmm. That was the thing. Oh, was that's it? cool, that's oh, how wow. you send. Yeah. So they imagined in that distant future that households would have 
multiple fax machines. <laughs> okay. Of course. Yeah. So when Marty was fired from his job, it was sent to him by fax, and every fax machine in his house out came yep. the thing, yeah. you're, you're fired. fired. Yeah. And he said, wow, that's the future. Right. We'll have more than one fax machine. So isn't that a little bit short-sighted to say, let's just put more of what we already have? No, we're not so much putting more. We're putting more capability, the, just the path. We don't know what kind of cable will go in it. We don't know what kind of antenna okay. will be there. So you assume it needs a path. You, you need to have a spot to put it, right? And okay. uh, that's becoming particularly challenging because... Uh, architects also want their stadiums to be beautiful, right? You want to experience the technology, but not have to see it. So you need to really design in from day zero mm. the ability to put all of this electronics there and be able to hide it. Tell me about helmet cams. That would be another, I, it'd be first, it would be interesting just to monitor helmet concussion, the, the, the mm -hmm. forces that operate on a helmet. Yep. You should be able to do that. If my iPhone that. Yeah. can measure accelerations no matter what I'm doing, a helmet could do that too. Absolutely. Okay. So, but not only that, just point of view cameras. Like, suppose I'm going to experience a game as a as a as a fan, and I can just flick on. Let me see what the quarterback is looking at. Let me see what the center. Let me see what the wide receiver. And that's their camera. Mm -hmm. What's what's yeah? What, how about that? So with with five G, we will be able to do that, especially in a sport like football where you have a lot of room to put uh, the heavier batteries and the the camera sensors, things like that. Well, like, oh, um, this is too heavy. This yeah, <laughs> but well, that's a baseball player, but, right? <laughs> but as a soccer player, <laughs> yeah. the good news, yeah, you guys, when you get yeah. clipped on the side, yeah. oh, oh, wait, oh, man, that's oh, it. Oh. I can't get up. The weight's too much. I'm falling. <laughs> yeah. I can't get up. You soccer players. What the oh, yeah. hell is wrong with y'all? Well, we got good news We're for... We're precious. We got good news for soccer football. Uh, Have you? Is that with... Is my team going to win? Well, with the, 3D, <laughs> with the 3D volumetric pixel imaging, mm -hmm. it's now possible computationally to recreate any view from an array of, say, 32 cameras around the stadium. This is like bullet time. Yeah. yeah. Like oh, in the Matrix exactly. where you can get any right. camera and, angle. And just, yeah. yeah. So you as a viewer could pick, you wouldn't even have to be limited to a specific helmet cam. You could pick the view right in between the two helmets and have that computed for you dynamically from the images that are already oh, taken. That's pretty wild. Ooh, that's, oh, ba that's, that. that's badass right there. See, now once again, it seems like you're working at, okay, so this would be, an. see, that's something that you want to keep to an in-stadium uh, experience, right? Yeah, to because th to be able to come and look on your phone and see a completely different game than you're actually watching on the field. Right. Why be limited yeah. to some Why cameraman right. who's parked on some spot on the sidelines? Yeah. You, yeah. you can actually curate your own game in real time as Ooh. you're sitting there. Yep. Let me see that replay. Ooh. You know, that, that's kind of cool. Yeah, you could end up, you know, with Twitch style re edits of. Mm. Mm. Not we got to take a break. Can you hang around for like the third segment? Absolutely. Because normally we just sort of, you know, chew the fat. But I want to chew the fat with you in the room. Sounds great. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. All right. This is Star Talk Sports Edition. We'll be right back. We're back. Star Talk. We have a special guest brought in from central Pennsylvania where this dude lives. Nobody's out there. But <laughs> well, no, he's here. <laughs> <laughs> he was the only one there now he's here Ben Brillat now, thanks for hanging out normally we just sort of chew the fat this segment but I want you there thanks while we chew the fat sounds good yes there we go all right we are. so I just I, I'm curious about some I, I'm looking at the rate at which stadium design is changing and that always tells me things it says if the rate is changing rapidly now we can praise any newly open stadium but if the rate is fast, it means in five years, that's going to be an old stadium. Just like technology itself. Technology itself. Yeah. You're actually... Your so, so how do you feel about this? <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's good news for me, right? Uh, the more tech job changes, security. Job, yeah, job security, job security. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, but now, do you build that into your design? Yeah, because because well, he said to. he future proofs by putting uh, uh, conduits to. and and places mm. where you would put stuff. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's capitalization terms for all of these things. You want to be sure you get your money's worth out of it. You need to be able, to especially do. when it's five billion dollars <laughs> worth of your money. <laughs> yeah, but go ahead. Uh, but it is a big challenge. What can you do? How far into that crystal ball can you see? Yeah. And you know, we make our best attempts at it but mm -hmm. you know some Gary, reflections. Uh, okay so we we touched on augmented reality now i'm just thinking if we really throw it a long way away do we actually need stadiums 
because you're going to sit there with your VR goggles and I'll give you an immersive suit so you can actually feel the hits yourself yeah. while you're sat there. That's too much. Right? <laughs> Oh, well, you can dial it up. That's too much. It just depends. You dial it up or you dial it down. Oh, dial it down. Yeah. 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 So do, oh, can I then. dial it down to a um, relaxing massage? <laughs> yeah, if you want. It's so, negative three. Negative three. Sort of we, we're talking about we got to get people out of their homes. We need to, you know, our competition isn't this, this, this. It's getting people away from their TV sets and it's the arena. But is it just going to come down to let's save the money and put it all into the fan experience? You know, you'd. You'd think that would have happened with video gaming, but what has actually happened is that e-gaming has yeah. now become a spectator a sport. Spectator sport <laughs> Absolutely. segment. Watching so, other people play their e-game. But in a yeah. stadium. You go to a stadium, in a stadium to watch on the big screen video games get played. It's true. Don't look at me like that. It's yeah. not me doing it. We're all sitting in this room looking at each other the same way. <laughs> it's like, which what? is, what the hell is wrong with these people? What? Yeah. Is that, but it's is a that, huge thing. Is that Gen X? Is that Gen Y? Is that millennials? Yeah. Well, let's get to the bottom of this. Yeah, who, who, it is. Who's doing this? Yeah, uh, the, the, the under 25 segment. It is, yeah. yeah. My son is totally into it, and I was completely- and He's 12. And, right, and I was completely against it until I found out that uh, these uh, so-called e-athletes Many of them have uh, seven-figure deals. Yep. And now he gets home, and I'm just like, but get upstairs and play that video game. <laughs> get those thumbs, grab, get those thumbs moving, boy. What's your problem? <laughs> Don't read a book. That's right. <laughs> are you reading? <laughs> oh, my God. Are you reading? <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> Reaction time. Uh, right. So, yeah. Are fans the whole thing here now? Are we... we, we Stadiums were built to honor the gladiators and the, the athletes. Now we are seeing a shift away to the fan, the spectator, the person who provides the income as being the point of view that is the most interesting. Where can we take that? Where can IBM, where can the stadium builders and architects of the future take that? Yeah, I mean, the fans, what we're trying to do with technology is deliver a better game through improved insights into how the players are moving their uh, physio mechanics, the uh, That's a word. coaching calls. Physio mechanics? I hope so. Okay. I, just said it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like yeah. learning new words. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Uh, and help the coaches to be able to make the best decisions that they can, help the players to be able to get the most that they can out of their own body to put it into an ever more entertaining game, right? So I think everybody is benefiting. You know, we talk about the greatest players of 60 years ago versus, you know, sort of your mid-tier players today. The mid-tier player had so much more information available to them to help mm -hmm. them train exactly the right muscle, yeah. rest on exactly the right rest day. Uh, you know, the, the level of play is just going up, up, up. All right, so let me ask you this. With that in mind, talking about the fan, let's talk about the owner for a second because here's the way I'm thinking. I spent all this money. I got this high-tech stadium. How am I going to make even more money off of all of this 5G capable technology? Yeah, what's that the business model? How's Where's the, money, the business model? How's the money come back into his right, pocket? I'm coming, I need that money to come back to me. Yeah. So am I going to be charged to see like certain replays that nobody else can see or i mean what because yeah. you know no what fan kind of paywall are you gonna put right up? there's no fan experience that's complete without an owner saying nah you don't have to pay for that <laughs> i mean all of that is possible right you can have uh you know premium subscriber level features you can have entry features you can have features you can only get if you are actually there that happens today a lot because of tv licensing agreements we can do more when you're physically in the stadium than we can outside can i give a, an example of that a really lame but heartfelt example. When I was nine, we went to the Bronx Zoo and we, we were very frugal as a family. I saw other rich kids, they could buy the elephant key. Mm -hmm. There's a plastic key and the elephant nose sticks out. And at every cage, back when animals were in cages, there was a, an information recording and you put the key in and turn it, and you get a narration about the animal. Right, but you had to buy that. You key. had to buy the key, key. Right. and we didn't buy the key. See, so I would just stand next to the rich kid. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mommy, so, why does this black kid keep following me everywhere? I'm sorry. So I, so I, I felt. I didn't feel like I was a part of the experience, right. and it didn't feel good to me, even though I paid. We had paid admission to the zoo itself. 
it was, I, I felt left out yeah. just because I couldn't afford it. And that was a visitor experience in 1968, 67, that was its version of what you're describing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so picking yeah. up on your I mean, elephant key analogy. I, by the way, I still own that elephant key. Just want you to know. For real. Where's For the, real. I'll bring it in. You did get one. The elephant in the room. <laughs> 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 the elephant in the room or, or the stadium. Gambling. When you've got mm. all of this ability to stream and do stuff. Oh, my God. There's a God. lot of money. Yeah. Hot, 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 hot. Yeah. So now you're talking there's about more money, there's gambling, more money than, gambling than, 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 all the any, of it, than yeah. any of it. Oh my God, Gary, you are brilliant. How do we get in on this <laughs> right now? Because <laughs> okay, I'm telling you. Shut off the cameras. We'll, yes, we'll, we'll find out. Find out. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you some real time betting while you're in the stadium. Mm -hmm. That's a money maker. Shake yeah. it. It it happens a lot more overseas than it does here. We have stronger laws. Anti gambling. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, but so, if I've spent five billion dollars to create my stadium entertainment palace, I'll be pushing really hard to get the gambling laws changed in the state of which. Oh, without a doubt. For yeah. Sure. Every state. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're seeing data that comes just for fantasy football, right? right. So fantasy yeah. football, fantasy baseball, the decision making data that's available to you for your own fantasy league is would probably knock the socks off of a coach from you know 1955 right. to have access to the kind of information that you're no 1975 you know, 1985 yeah. the right. kind of data they have so going back to your point what else happens how does how does the owner you the owner make money i put a massive big complex of theaters show movies i have Shopping mall. I was about to say that. How? Why aren't stadiums? When we were about to come out of it, why don't stadiums have um, multiple use built into? It's like the stadium sits empty for most of the time. Yeah, this is the whole deal with SoFi. Well, so, well, SoFi, right. SoFi is a great example. Yeah. Okay, so okay, but so, uh, all right. So SoFi. So a professional football schedule today is sixteen games. If yep. you don't go into the playoffs, correct? Right. Okay, mm -hmm. so. Most football, pure football stadiums are used 16 weekends out of 52, yep. period. Then I noticed 10 years ago, 20 years, they tried to turn them into uh, conferencing centers yeah. and things, get a little extra money on the side. But still, yeah. what are you doing? Hold yeah. your yeah. event yeah. here. Maybe hold a rock concert, okay? Yeah. Yep. But still, you're in a stadium, right? So with SoFi, it has two teams interlaced. Yep. So now it's 32 weekends. Yep. That's way better than... Mm -hmm. 16 Next out of 52, but still you got another 20 weekends when nothing's happening. Yep. Is the business model so lucrative that you can go unused for 20 weekends? No, you need to drive that attendance up and the use of your facility. So in Atlanta, they have also Atlanta United, the MLS Atlanta, soccer your Mercedes team. Atlanta Mercedes yes. facility? Yeah. So the Atlanta United MLS soccer team has oh, games that are played yep. there also. Your so that My has peeps. really <laughs> driven up, yep, really driven up the usage of the building. Mm -hmm. um, and then, then you get like, all the immigrants come in, they, they get something to watch, right? <laughs> right. Because all the immigrants play soccer. Absolutely. Every, every Last one of them. They've put seventy thousand fans in oh, the Atlanta stadium yeah. for MLS soccer. Yep. Wow! Absolutely. Yeah, it's a huge drop. And not an American among. It's a huge drop. <laughs> There's more. <laughs> no, I'm just uh, kidding. No, 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 but in a way, you're right. When no. the World Cup is on, <laughs> and you walk around Manhattan, it is so people are so indifferent to it's, it. It's it's like people don't care, and then you look in every bar, and it is filled to the brim. Right. right. You know, mm -hmm. and, and, and but and none of them are American. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I, Atlanta's culture is changing with the Atlanta United. Actually, yeah. the Atlanta United are driving fans into that sport at a rate that is Sweet. just crazy. Yeah, I mean, you walk by bars in Atlanta and there is an Atlanta United flag. There are kids going to it. Fantastic. Uh, Atlanta okay. Games. All right, so, oh, so really America might come around on this. Yeah. The <laughs> soccer thing. Yeah, yeah no, you're getting there. <laughs> right. you're getting, but I think the footprint of the SoFi Stadium, I think, is greater than Disneyland. Yeah. In, well, in including stadium. parking. Yeah. Okay. Are you for... What? <laughs> there, it's yeah. this well, multi-use district. For? Yeah. What else is there? What else is no, in that stadium? Build, they're building in the the multiplex hotel. Oh, hotel. The hotels, oh, there's there's shopping. shopping. Oh, oh, that's yeah. so the so idea it's a campus. is it's a campus. Right. It's yes. to make it a destination yep. area. The yes. area yes. becomes a destination. Yep. Gotcha. That's and the then point. the game is just one other thing you do. One yep. more thing. Something to do that you can walk to. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Cool. Because there's a finite amount of people that can go and watch a game, but they want to come and enjoy the experience. So you will build fan parks yep. outside. All right, I got. I have an obscure geeky. Sciency comment, okay. mm -hmm. if I may. I'm ready. Okay. Um, if you're charging a battery, either an electric car or any kind of rechargeable battery, the if it's dead and you start charging it, 
like the first 20 percent happens very quickly and then as the battery gets more and more charged the rate at which it reaches the top gets slower and slower and slower so that last five percent takes almost as long as the previous all the time it took to get to that 95 percent okay do you know why no okay i'm, I'm about to find out uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the analogy is a stadium parking lot because in a dead battery you have all these electrons in the wrong place mm -hmm. okay they done served you now you got to punch them back to, so that they can serve you again. They got to swim upstream and they got to park on the other side of that battery. But they can only park in pre-designated places. Oh, so, yeah. the, 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 so if you're the first electron upstream, you park anywhere. I'm by the door. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so in okay. a stadium, if I'm early at the stadium, I can park anywhere. I can park within seconds. Yep. The later I come, even if there is a parking spot for me, mm -hmm. it'll take me longer to find it. So that when the parking spot is almost entirely full and only five slots left, it could take me a half hour to find a parking spot. I have to look for those spots. That's right. why it takes longer to charge the last part of your battery than the first part, because of the parking lot problem. Yeah. Have you solved the parking problems? Yeah, we, we have. Uh, oh. Smart parking systems. Smart parking. So, yeah. And it Assigned turns out parking? Well, predetermined the sign. We have a sign parking predetermined. We also have smart parking systems. If you've been like in Heathrow Airport, mm -hmm. uh, with red and green lights over every single parking spot, so you can look down a hallway and see if there's a green light. Oh, what? so there's no yeah. hidden spots. Yeah, signs that tell you how many are left on each level. Turns out this is a huge source of pollution in cities too. Yes. So yes. there's companies People working, driving around, like right. not just in parking lots. Period. Yeah. In yeah. every metro place. Driving around, driving around, around, around parking. Parking. Like 80% of all cars that are in motion that are not taxis are looking, looking for, parking. for parking. Yeah. So this, <laughs> this company is trying to solve this now to be able to help you. Uh, there's some new deployments out in Europe of smart parking systems in cities so that you can know I where like to go. I the fact that you could just see it above all the cars and the green ones that's right there. Yep. And, and, simple. Simple. and it's, that's some little car that's hidden behind the, the, the exactly. SUV. Yeah, yeah, well, motors, motors, motors. Don't you get angry when it happens? I always yeah. flatten their tires. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now, how many people are now looking for a space and there's only one green light? No, then no. Oh, we meet then, then, we then, meet then they all converge too. on the same <laughs> yeah. space. Yeah. This is like break out. Right. How fast can you drive? <laughs> See, up to this that is park? LA, so Larry David's going to be the going to be there. That's <laughs> you know that Larry David. You no, know, he's going to be there. His little electric car of curb your enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we yeah. can actually using cameras, we can actually follow your car right. through the parking garage and provide you individually appropriate signage at every turn for where you should go. Oh, smart can you, signs. Can you smart talk signs. to the car? Like, turn left, you idiot. Well, you can yeah. change. No, just tell the car, they car read. talk yeah. to the thing, right. and I'm going to sit back. <laughs> yeah. that, you know, that's exactly yeah. that's where it's Let actually going. Let the car park its own name. Park its own. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, that is I'm super cool. I'm watching the game. You park yourself. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, final thoughts, Chuck. What do you have? Um, you know, I'm going to go to a game. Uh, and and probably be disappointed yeah. because none of the cool crap we're talking about is going to be there. It's not yet. <laughs> it's not happening. But yet. Will, he'll call. Get his phone number. He'll call you. Exactly. Right. We'll go together. Gary, I think it's great. I think it's brilliant because everybody wins. The players are going to win. The coaches, IBM could become the best football coach ever, right? All the bio data, all the telemetrics, all the players are going to win and the fans are going to get a better experience. So it's a win, win, win. Brilliant. Yeah. What thoughts do you have at night before you go to sleep about all this? I want to make sure that my son, when he goes to have, he's four now, when he goes to a game, that he will be able to have the experience that he is imagining when he gets there. So Ooh. his world his world already he can talk to the house right and have right. the lights turn on he can type because he just talks to his computer the information in the world is at his fingertips 15 this years your four -year -old from now child? yeah 15 years like, from now when he's there your four-year-old child's want... running the house with his apps yeah <laughs> uh, alexa hey, change the locks <laughs> <laughs> ah, take that dad <laughs> try to get in the house now <laughs> he, he hasn't found that command set yet but <laughs> he could yeah you better get some really good parental guidance on that <laughs> alexa change the locks <laughs> You know, the world that he imagines is different than I can imagine. And I want him to have a great experience that keeps his attention and keeps him going. So, uh, Here's what I look forward to, because I think about this all the time. Um, I'd like imagining tomorrow's technology for many reasons, but including the fact that if it's good enough, it will make everything I think is modern today look old. Ooh. So 
in the future, I want the technology to not even be anything you are projecting for it. I want it to benefit from innovations, may I say, out of left field. Mm -hmm. Something you didn't even know was on its way in that lands in your lap technologically and you say, oh my gosh, that's a game changer. And with that, there's a future experience for the player, the visitor, yep. the coach, that today we can yet imagine. Sweet. It'd be great. Blood the revenue sharing. Looking forward to it. <laughs> that's what I... That's, that's a cosmic <laughs> sports perspective. Dude, thanks for coming. Thanks yeah. very much. Very, uh, thanks for coming all this way from central Pennsylvania, which is in the middle of friggin' nowhere. <laughs> it is. All right. Chuck, Gary. Mm -hmm. Pleasure. Always good. Yeah. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson.